3.1, solving linear equations. We are going to solve a linear equation in standard form and solve a linear equation in non-standard form. So for this lesson, um, I'm gonna use examples two through four. So these are gonna represent examples two through four in your textbook. The first one says X over three plus three equal to zero. So in order to solve this problem, if you're someone that does not like fractions, the first thing is get rid of your fraction. So since the denominator here has a value of three, we are going to multiply every single piece of our equation by three. In doing so, the threes are going to cancel out, leaving you with plain X plus three times three is your nine, equaling zero times three is your zero. And then we are gonna subtract the nine over, which results in X equaling negative nine. On example B, it says three Y plus eight minus five Y equaling four. So notice that the Y values, they're both on the same side of the equal sign. So you're gonna first combine like terms. So what we're seeing is that the 3y and a negative 5y, think of it as 3y minus 5y, I'm putting them in parentheses, plus 8 equals 4. I grouped my two terms together so that I can consolidate. So 3 minus the 5 makes it negative 2y plus 8 equaling 4. We're going to move 8 across the bridge. Think of this side, the left side being New York the right side being New Jersey, and the equal sign is the George Washington Bridge, and we're crossing over. So I'm subtracting eight over. So we get negative two Y equaling four minus eight is a negative four, and then divide both sides by negative two. Leaving you with plain Y equaling negative divided by negative makes it positive. Four divided by two is a two. On example C, it says 2x plus 3 equals 2 parentheses x plus 4, close the parentheses. So first thing we need to do is notice that the left side is already completely out of a parentheses. The right side needs to be distributed. So we are diving in, we're distributing in the 2 by multiplication. So the left side slides down, 2x plus 3 equaling 2 times x is 2x, 2 times 4 is positive 8. Now, when we look at this, it says that 2x plus 3 is equivalent to 2x plus 8. Since both sides of the equal sign have 2x in equivalent to each other, they are going to cancel themselves out. And then you're resulting in 3 equaling 8, which is not possible. So this is a no solution problem. You can use no solution, a DNE, which represents does not exist. Um, an empty set or just the zero with a line through the top. On D it says four parentheses x plus three close the parentheses equals four x plus twelve. Again the right side this time has everything expanded out the left side does not so we are distributing in with the four. So you get four x plus twelve equaling four x plus 12. When we look here, the 4x and the 4x balance, so they can cancel themselves out. The 12 and the 12, they're both the same weight, so they also cancel themselves out, so you end up with 0 equaling 0. When you see 0 equaling 0, or 1 equaling 1, or 100 equaling 100, this is known as infinite solutions or they could say all reals because it means any number you pick and plug in for X on the left is gonna be the same value on the right and both sides will be equivalent. This next example represents examples five and six in your book. So it says tickets for a concert cost $175 for each floor seat and $95 for each stadium seat. There are 2,500 seats on the main floor, and these were sold out. The total revenue from ticket sales was $865,000. How many stadium seats were sold? So first thing we need to know is identify what they gave us. 
they're telling us that the cost is 175 for each floor seat and 95 dollars for each stadium seat so floor seat is 175 stadium is 95. they're telling us that there are 2500 seats on the main floor so the main floor has 2,500 seats and were sold out. Then they tell you the total revenue was $865,000. So total revenue is $865,000. And they're asking us, this is what they're wanting to find out is how many stadium seats were sold. So we're gonna come up with a verbal model of what they need so basically what we're saying is that total revenue is going to be equal to the revenue from the floor seats plus the revenue from the stadium So this is how we're starting our problem. It says total revenue is equal to the revenue of the floor plus the revenue of the stadium. We already have our labels. What, how much each floor seat costs, how much each stadium seat costs, how many seats were in the floor, how, many, what, how much was our total revenue. What we don't have is the number of stadium seats because they're asking us to find stadium seats. It's what we don't know, so that's our unknown. Main floor happened to be our floor seats. So we already know, and these were all sold out. So now we're gonna come up with the equation. Our total revenue they told us was 865,000. So we have 865 comma 000 equaling revenue from the floor. The floor has 2,500 seats. And they sold it at $175 a seat. Plus the revenue from the stadium seats, we don't know because that's our X, but they sold at $95 a seat. So we have our equation. Next thing we need to do is multiply our expansion piece. So with the use of the calculator, we're going to do $2,500 times our $175 per seat. So we have 865,000 equaling 437,500 plus, I'm switching the 95 with the X and just writing it as 95X, so then the X is on the back side. Notice that the money is on the left, we have money on the right with an additional variable. So we are subtracting the money on the right to the left side. So I'm subtracting 437,500 to the left So we get 95x equaling, so 865 minus the 437.5. So I get 427,500 equaling the 95x. And then we divide both sides by 95. Which means we had 4,500 stadium seats in the show. This next example pertains to example seven in the book. It says, write an algebraic equation that represents the problem stated below, then solve the equation and answer the question. You have accepted a job offer at an annual of an annual salary of $40,830. This salary includes a year end bonus of $750. You are paid twice a month. What will your gross pay be for each paycheck? So first thing, let's look what they tell you. Your salary, is $40,830. So I'm gonna write salary is $40,830. It includes a year end bonus of 750. So year end bonus of 750. You're paid twice a month.
So it's not every two weeks, it's twice a month, which means you're probably paid on the 15th of the month and the 31st of the month, unless it, there's only 30 days in the month. And then it says, what will, they're asking us to find what will be our gross pay each paycheck. So we need to come up with a verbal model in this instance. Again, income for the year, because that's our salary, is going to equal. Now, because you're paid twice a month, and there's, remember, 12 months, times two, because it's twice a month, there are 24 paychecks, this is what you're receiving. So you're receiving 24 paychecks, times the amount of each paycheck plus your bonus. Because remember, we don't know how much each paycheck is. That's going to be our letter X. So now let's replace what we have. We know we have our salary, which is 40,830, 24 months times X paychecks, because we don't know how many each paycheck, plus our bonus that we get at the end of the year, which is 750. We need to move our money to the left because we want to isolate our X. So we are subtracting 750 back. So we get 4830 minus our 750, giving us $40,080, equaling 24X. And then we're dividing everything by 24. So divide by 24. So each paycheck is going to be $1,670.